Redditors who left companies that non-stop talk about their amazing culture. What was the cringe moment that made you realize you had to get out? I'm in management, and we just got the message that bonuses for the last financial year were severely cut across the business. Probably going to receive 30% of our total potential at best. Then attended our financial end of year results meeting the next day, to be told that net profits were 18% up, nearly 1 billion total, and the best performance in years, all thanks to us. Okay, planning on leaving now. Oh my god, I went through something similar in 2000. Was working for a financial firm. 1800 employees, with a sales force of 200. I was one of the salesmen. We had our annual meeting in April. It was a big affair. Most of the employees attended, and the CEO gave a big speech about how the previous year was the best in the company's history, blah blah blah. The next month, May, we each submitted memos basically justifying why we qualified for, or should qualify for bonuses at the end of June. I wrote mine out and explained the sales growth in my territory over the course of the previous 12 months and what percentage my sales were out of last year's total sales. Coming off the company's best year ever, it should have been a slam dunk, right? All of us were excited about how much we'd have coming in June. June rolls around and my bonus is zero. Zero. But it's not just me. It's all over the sales floor. Less than 20% of the sales force got bonuses, and holy shit everyone was pissed. All the supervisors were dealing with angry subordinates, the sales manager was too, and even the VP and director above him. Everyone was furious and insubordinate, angry accusatory emails were flying, and the company was facing a mutiny. It got worse when it came out that the supervisors were offered bonuses that they could determine for themselves. Most of them took them, but a couple knowing their subordinates wouldn't be getting anything, refused. My supervisor took his. When it came out, he tried to explain to his sales team about how he felt it was justified and how hard he worked. He ended up with people screaming at him about how they felt the same, but they didn't get jack shit. So for a week or so, things on the floor came to a stop. A lot of people just didn't show up, and the ones that did were angry. I came in and started reading monster.com ads at my desk. I also stopped selling anything, or answering my phone. When confronted by my boss, I told him that as soon as I got the bonus my sales justified, I'd start working again. Until then I'd be coming in late, reading and responding to want ads, and leaving early. He could expect me to keep that up until I found another job or was fired. The following day I was sent to the regional sales manager's office. She said she'd heard about my work stoppage, and asked me to explain myself. I told her that if she heard about it from my supervisor, then she already knew why I wasn't working, and I didn't need to explain it again. She tried buddying up to me, being friendly, then being stern, then being angry. I kept my composure and told her that the longer the company held out on my bonus, the longer it was going to miss out on sales from my territory. I then gave her my average daily amount of sales from the previous year, quantified what the total loss would be for a week of me not selling, and how much cheaper it would be just to pay me the money I was owed, and get me back to selling. Then I thanked her for her time and told her I'd be leaving work as soon as I left her office. And I did. The following day I came in, checked my emails, some of which were farewell emails from co-workers who quit over their stolen bonuses and sat on monster.com until I was told to go to the office of the national sales manager. He's the gatekeeper, he's in charge of all 200 of us. He told me he understood that I was upset, and could see why. I asked him if withholding the bonuses from 80% of his sales force was his idea or someone else's. He didn't answer. He did tell me that I would be getting a check on Monday, and could I please go back to work now? I told him I'd be going back to my desk, but work wouldn't start until the check was in my hand. When I went back and checked my emails, yup, more defections. The next day an email went out to the entire sales force, management had taken a look at the numbers, re-evaluated the financials, and determined that June bonuses would be issued shortly. The email also apologized for the delay, and reminded us that a salesman, 
we were the core of the company, and our hard work was appreciated. I also received another email, this time from the national sales manager, who told me while bonuses were scheduled for Monday, he'd be walking my check to my desk the following day. The following day I showed up, sat down, and shortly afterwards the national sales manager walked on up and handed me my bonus check. I thanked him, and handed him my resignation effective immediately. In my resignation letter I requested that a check for my unused vacation time please be cut and given to me before I left the building. When he finished reading it, I told him I'd clean out my desk while I waited for the vacation check. While I was doing that, one of my co-workers also resigned effective immediately. We were walked out at the same time, and ended up getting drunk at the bar across the street. I learned later from co-workers that remained that even though the company issued the bonuses, they lost about 20% of the sales force in the following two months. Gotta love corporate greed. My last job was at an independent school in the UK, the wealthy type. During a period of streamlining, the entire faculty were called into a hall and told, in upbeat terms, that we were struggling to make ends meet. Salaries were too high, perks were too abundant, and spending was unsustainable. For clarity, salaries weren't too high, and perks were practically non-existent. Spending was definitely unsustainable, however, in part because they were spending hundreds of thousands redesigning the senior staff offices to hide all the cabling and install proper wood paneling. So then they started listing off perks and assigning them a value. For example, free parking. Well no shit, the school has a lot of land and isn't in a city. Why would you charge? Secondly, nice surroundings. Well again, no shit, that's part of your marketing appeal. Long holidays? Nice try, but I work all holiday. They didn't even get as far as telling me what they plan to do with my job and pay, I was gone in less than 3 months. This is what the woman who interviewed me said, here at Cheapskate Architects we don't often do all nighters for our customers, but when we do, it's a real pizza party. Also we don't pay overtime, we do it for the love. And your wage is 22,000 even though you are an architect. And also I won't be there because I'm HR management, because I'm married to the director. Yes we need an HR department even though there's 3 employees. They changed the title of the receptionist to director of first impressions. Edit, for everyone asking, it's a tiny company in the Midwest. At Big W here in Australia, think Walmart, but no guns, they changed the door greeter title to customer champion. Stupidest ducking thing I'd ever heard, and all the managers thought it was genius. Not me, but my husband worked for two weeks for a family owned and operated business that touted how important family was, and that they were all one happy family. My husband was on his way to drop our at the time two year old son off at daycare before work, when son threw up all over himself. Husband called his employer to tell them what happened and that he needed to take son home and clean him up, but he'd be in ASAP. His manager told him he needed to get his priorities straight. He responded with, you know what? You're right, I won't be back in at all. He was still working part time at his previous job where they had been sad that he was leaving, so he called them and told them to put him back on the schedule full time. The family business is currently in the process of liquidating assets before going out of business, and I cackle every time I drive past it. Bought out by an equity group. New president on call with thousands of employees says, we have two kinds of employees, those that work a tremendous number of hours, and those that should find another company to work for. We have two types of employees, former employees and morons. Not my company, but a company from a neighboring building. They had an entire area devoted to football, pinball, billiards, console gaming, and video booths on the ground floor, and it was clearly visible because of the glass windows on street level. Oddly enough, nobody ever used them, and the place was almost always empty, save for a few people who used the internet kiosks. When I learned a friend worked there, I asked why nobody would want to take the opportunity to use the awesome looking recreational facility. He told me that people who do use the facility often found it used against them during performance evaluations, 
even when their use wasn't excessive at all. After a while word got around, and they started avoiding the place altogether. The irony is that their recruitment ads always touts a culture of work hard play hard. We, management team, spent months working with a business coach trying to collectively come up with meaningful core values. We devoted a ton of time to it, and really tried to decide which direction we wanted to take the company culture. Everybody agreed on teamwork, reliability, a couple others that I can't remember now, and then one day, the owner came in and called a meeting. He sat us down in the boardroom and told us he spent all weekend brainstorming, and had decided on the core values. They were, meaningful ownership neighborhood engagement you. Does anybody see what that spells? He literally wanted it to be money, and just came up with words that sort of worked the way you do in elementary school writing your name poem. He rebranded the entire company from t-shirts with giant first letters and smaller letters, for the rest of the word straight down the arms, to plagues, wraps on the cars, every ducking thing. And that's when we all knew it was going to get bad. Money is great, but it was mortifying walking slash driving around with that plastered everywhere. When I went to firm drinks in a public bar, and the firm's fun committee handed out song sheets, and a choir of employees led by a bad guitarist sang a song about how great the firm was to the tune of cause I'm happy. We were expected to sing along. It was at that moment I realized I was in a cult.